Hi, my name is Ron Turcotte. We're here with other, feder other fellow veterans to uh, appreciate a bomb-sniffing dog who is in retirement. Uh, this is kind of a belated retirement. And uh, we were hoping to do something uh, before he passed. He just passed his 12th birthday. And uh, he's showing signs of, of uh, health failure. So uh, we thought it would be a good idea to uh, recognize his service as a bomb-sniffing dog in Afghanistan for nearly eight years. And uh, it should be very interesting. Thank you. Well, good morning, everyone, and thanks for being here. Uh, this is a very special occasion for us, uh, first time for me, actually, and I think for the Post. Uh, I'd like to start off with a, uh, a very short prayer, and then we'll have a uh, Pledge of Allegiance, uh, which is how we usually start our meetings at the VFW and the American Legion. So uncover. Uh, you can remain seated. Creator of the universe, you have made all creatures and called them good. We ask that you watch over Sado and give him good health in his senior years. Keep him safe from all harm. Surround him with your love and that of his family. We ask this in your holy name. Amen. At this time, I would ask our adjutant, Paul DeShanes, to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand. Present arms. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Paul. And for the record, I just want to make, a, a, again, a very special, uh, warm welcome for Sado. Uh, contract work dog. Uh, last five digits of his chip, 47350. And again, welcoming his uh, family, Jen and Annalise, and his mo uh, Jen's mother, Jan and John. Thank you for coming again. And uh, John, we understand that you are a, uh, a combat veteran who served with the 9th Infantry Division in Vietnam. We thank you for your service. I want to introduce our uh, VFW leadership and uh, American Legion. First, we have Commander Steve Bradford, Commander of the American Legion, and the Commander of the VFW, uh, Dave DeGan, is away and couldn't be here. Uh, in his place, we have our Senior Vice Commander, Robert Hawkins, Junior Vice, Charlie Jacobs, and our Adjutant, Paul DeShanes. And our uh, TAPS performer is Joe Zavati, way in the back there. Thanks, Joe. At this time, I would uh, invite Sergeant Hagen, if you would, uh, give us a few words of your wisdom. Thank you. Yeah. Sure. Morning. 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 Say thank you all for your service and his service. Um, Mr. Turcott asked me to come down and, and maybe say a few words about uh, what I do and what these drugs do, um, which is a very special thing. Um, if you asked me 20 years ago when I started out in law enforcement that I think I'd be a canine handler, I would say no way. Um, I had no idea what it entailed. Uh, I've been very fortunate. Uh, I'm the second canine handler with the Holliston Police Department. Chief Stone uh, was our first canine handler, which is great when you have um, that type of support for a program because it is a difficult program to maintain. Um, a dog is with me 24-7 and as you know, Slasher can explain these dogs, all they want to do is work. Obviously, they start to get a little older, but um, it's a 24-7 job with him. Um, I've never seen a breed of dog that just wants to work so hard, and that's all they want to do is work and please. Uh, it's really amazing to watch them work. I spent uh, 16 weeks with the Boston Police Canine Academy. Uh, training K-9 Madison, his first function is patrol function. It was tracking, uh, apprehension, obedience, uh, handler protection. Uh, after that, uh, K-9 Madison, 
we went for a secondary purpose. Uh, he's trained in narcotics detection, uh, which is actually, which is interesting. It's amazing to watch these dogs work with their nose. Um, you, you can talk about it all day, um, but until you see it, it it's, it's really great to, uh, to watch. Um, over the last few years, I've actually enjoyed some books about, uh, you know, the military working dogs and how they work. Uh, it, it, you know, it's sometimes it's kind of sad in the sense because, um, you know, K-9 Mattis eventually he'll be able to retire with me. Uh, some of those military working dogs, they'll stay in, they'll keep working, you know, while, you know, service members, you know, work, get, work their way out. Sometimes they get the opportunities to take the dogs home, sometimes they don't, but it's great when they have, you know, some uh, people who are willing to take these dogs. Because some of these dogs, they can be tough dogs. They can be busy dogs, especially the fact they're just used to doing so much all the time. So um, sometimes as they're aged, you know, it's nice to see them mellow. I'm kind of hoping he might mellow out at some point, but we'll see when that happens. So, um, But I really appreciate you guys having me here. I think this is a wonderful thing to uh, recognize. And uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You mentioned Chief Stone. I remember uh, a couple of years ago, I got a, uh, an opportunity to go through the uh, Citizen Academy, Police Academy, and we had a demonstration with uh, Kesh. And his bond with uh, Jeff, I mean, yeah, with Matt, was so tight that the only way Kesh got his food was out of the hand of Matt. That's how dependent he was on Matt. But you know, it's not all fun and games. I know they, they do like to work, and especially with uh, German Shepherds, uh, their work ethic is tremendous. Uh, they will work all day just for uh, a favorite toy, where a, a lab retriever will, uh, of course, they're always hungry. So that's their, uh, that's their reward. But these dogs uh, go through a lot of training. Uh, Jen was kind enough to let me go through uh, the uh, health record of uh, Sado. And it seems as though he was in several places throughout the country. Uh, he was one of the first to get to Afghanistan. Uh, the dogs didn't appear in Afghanistan until uh, 2011. And uh, he was uh, very busy. I was really impressed with that uh, health record. Uh, it was very thorough. He always had uh, uh, regular checkups. Uh, and when you stop and think about it, it's, it's really important because people's lives depended on the health of the dog. And as long as they were, you know, he was able to work. Uh, we don't know of any of the uh, uh, missions he might have been on, but I'm sure he was very busy, and uh, we thank him for his service. Uh, just a few uh, interesting things that I found out along the way preparing for today. Uh, everybody knows that dogs are terrific smellers. You know, they're fantastic. Uh, the thing is, they have they have up to 600 million. Uh, olfactory receptors, where human beings uh, only have five million. So you can understand how uh, terrific their smelling capabilities are. Uh, and a dog like Sato, his, his brain is probably 35% his smelling function, where human beings are uh, lucky to be five. So that's really... Uh, uh, really a gift. I was able to reach out to uh, his handler, Rowan, and I asked him uh, if he had any stories that he was willing to share with us. And he did write back, and I was, I was very happy to hear from him. And uh, I'd like to read you what he, uh, what he wrote. The first thing which I did when our relationship started in Texas was to look up the meaning of his name, which means sugar and wise. Which I found out soon after we met that it suited my new partner perfectly. You were such a sweet, caring, and lovable pup partner, and it was an absolute pleasure 
to work with you. On the other hand, you were also very wise, as it did take, as it did, did, did not take you long to know what you were supposed to do when it came to the work we needed to do as a team. I can proudly state that you were my best partner so far in my working career, and a special bond was formed from our short time together. We experienced few things together, but one that stood out of me, for me was when you had a bad stomach bug. I remember vividly how I had to run around to get an appointment with a veterinarian in another camp. As I was scared that you would get dehydrated, I remember scheduling the appointment and we had to board a Black Hawk helicopter that very same evening at 12.15 a.m. to meet the veterinarian. I can still picture the faces of the two spotters during the flight that when you left a stink bomb in the chopper and they assumed that you did it number one as they were aware that you had a stomach bug. Luckily, I had no cleaning up to do after the flight. Good boy, Sato. Keep well. You will always have a special place in my heart, my partner, and I will never forget the bond that we, we have until the day I die with tears in my eyes. One day we will meet again. You must enjoy your retirement, and I'm sure you will be well looked after by Jennifer as we have met virtually, and I felt that she has a good heart. Rowan Cannon. As far as I can tell, Sato's military career kind of ended. He had uh, some dental problems. And of course, getting older, you know, it was time for him to retire. And he was very lucky to find a home with you. Very lucky indeed. Uh, at this time, I'd like to ask Commander Steve Bradford, who would like to say a few words and do the presentation. It's right there, Steve. Good morning. Good morning. It's a uh, truly wonderful event to be able to hold here, uh, to recognize uh, Sato for his, uh, his duty, his service, his accomplishments. It's, uh, I don't recall ever reading in the local papers about this type of a recognition happening. So, Jen, thank you for reaching out to Ron. At this time, I'm going to read the citation. Jen, you'll have to take it for him. I don't think he can grasp it. Okay. <clears throat> this is a uh, certificate of appreciation for service in Afghanistan, 2011 to 2019. CWD Sato, serial number 47350. And under that is a picture of America's Forgotten Heroes, War Dogs, given this day March 26, 2022, signed by Dave DeGan, Commander of VFW Post 8507 Holliston, and by myself, Commander of American Legion Post 47 Holliston, Mass 01746. And at the top, we have the emblems of uh, the logos of both posts and the American flag. So, Jen? Um, so thank you all very much uh, for doing this. This is absolutely amazing. Um, I'm the proud, proud daughter of a Vietnam veteran, and I've always been um, con interested, I guess, in supporting troops and, and uh, thanking. And a few years ago, I happened to stumble across some books on, on working dogs, Maria Goodavage books on uh, military dogs and became absolutely fascinated with what they do um, and what they know. And 
many of them do get to come home with their handlers. Uh, many of them do not. And um, some of them are contracted through private organizations, and oftentimes those organizations do not pay to bring them home. Um, so sometimes they're, they're left over there. So I, of course, decided that I need to adopt one, uh, despite already having a dog at home, uh, our Basset Hound Lab named Dewey. Um, but I had read, uh, I found an organization out of Pennsylvania that uh, pays to bring them home and fosters them out. And I read that it can take up to two years uh, to, to uh, match up with a dog. So I said, the, the school year was coming to an end. I'm a teacher at Holliston High School. Uh, we were winding down and I had some time on my hands. So I filled out the application and about three weeks later, we got a phone call <laughs> that they found a dog for us who's good with kids and good with other dogs. And before I knew it, I was in the car on my way to Pennsylvania and um, brought my other dog, Dewey. Uh, we got there, they played for about 10 minutes, happy as larks, got back in the car and came home. Um, and we've been blessed ever since. He is an absolute teddy bear. Uh, he's a big, lovable goofball and uh, stubborn with his toys. He doesn't like to give them back. Um, he's trained in Dutch, his commands are in Dutch. Um, but I love, we just love having him as part of our family. I think Annalise, when she first saw the picture, was terrified. Yeah. Um, <laughs> couldn't believe I was bringing this dog into our house, but he is the snuggliest teddy bear. He loves belly rubs. He loves to play. He loves to wrestle with his brother. Um, and we're just so happy to have him as part of our family. Um, about a month or so ago, we thought we were going to lose him. Uh, he has arthritis in his back hips and... Um, the vet is concerned that there might be some other things going on. And there was a day when he wouldn't get off the couch, he wouldn't eat, he wouldn't drink. Uh, so we thought this was it. And I reached out to the VFW for possible um, military honors. And Ron ran with it and, and created this amazing event. And we are so lucky that he surprised us all and pulled through and he's doing great. And uh, we're just gonna enjoy every minute that we have left with him. And we just really appreciate this opportunity to show him off um, and to honor him. So thank you all very much. It's for you. At this time, we're gonna have our uh, Joe Sabati, who is a, our bugler and a member of the uh, Bugles Across America. He's going to do taps as a closing. So if you would all stand. Okay, Joe. Go ahead, Joe. Read that. Ah. Again, I want to thank you all for coming. I want to thank Kristen from HCAT and Mr. Chris, Court, Chris from uh, the Holliston Reporter. And my fellow veterans, thank you for coming. Uh, this has been truly a, uh, an exceptional experience for me, and, and I hope it has been for you. And thanks again. Very nice. Thank you. Appreciate.